that, you can see the manifold right here. That's the intake manifold. PDI logo, everything's cleaned up. The exhaust manifold's a little bit of a challenge to even photograph, let alone get to. And these guys know what they're doing. At PDI, they're doing at least a couple of these duels um, a month. At some rate, they've been going two a week. To give you an idea how tight this is, this is my hand going back towards the bellows on the exhaust manifold. You can barely see the polished exhaust manifold back here. It's that silica coating they got. They take the brace off here. They remove the air compressor, the alternator. They remove all of this so they have clear, clean access. And then they get it all buttoned up, double checked. They even utilize some of the extra bosses down here to wrap up some of the cables that weren't really secure. So it looks really super clean now. The light that was back here was a single puck light on a piece of angle metal. Didn't really do the job to light up the load center, which is right here. But now, as you can see, I got some great light to work on, whether it's the batteries or the load center. I chose white because the problem is if you go amber, something colored, you're gonna lose all this labeling in here. It's gonna cancel out the red and the yellow. These are called penny lights. So these are basically truck marker lights, but they're LED and they have little prisms on the side. So these actually can be rotated directionally to give you some, some lights in different areas. But yeah, this is an angled bracket that they fabricated here. So the next thing to do is we're gonna get her over on the dyno. When it comes to um, dyno numbers, we ran our dyno and accidentally we were in fifth when we took the final sets of numbers, but that's okay because when we run our final set, we're gonna take the same numbers in fifth, fifth gear, which is actually an overdrive for this transmission and engine setup. But that's okay because we're looking for percentage gain. So we're looking for before, which is the PDI super tuner on the power mode. And then we're gonna dyno it after with the intake and exhaust manifold with the power mode in fifth gear. That will give us a percentage gain of the intake and exhaust manifold. So fear not, you'll have the exact extrapolation of numbers from before and after. And that will, the good news is that'll apply to basically every setting. If it's a 10% gain and I started at 550 horsepower, it's the same basic gain as if I had a wrong number at 575 or 600. So you have to understand that when they do these placarding, they're looking at flywheel numbers you know, it could be an engine on a rack in a dyno room like that. And that's not what we're after. We're after, actually after what's on the ground. So their dyno is on a roller and that measures the ground horsepower and ground torque. And then the software on the computer will extrapolate those numbers and give you what's calculated based on the final drive ratio into a flywheel number. It most likely will not match the well-known 600 posted horsepower of the ISX motor. This is a 2015, it's the ISX. The X15 is a little bit higher at 605. But the bottom line is we're looking for that raw percentage gain from the intake and exhaust manifolds. And then that will translate into the actual number that would apply to you. Then before we leave the dyno, we're gonna go back to fourth gear, which will be the direct drive for the final dyno. And that's gonna be the number that I take home with me we're looking at maybe up to 100 horsepower gain. Now I was at 545 in fifth. So that's substantially lower on horsepower and 1150 for torque, which was substantially lower in torque. So we're gonna look for a significant gain in horsepower. And again, those will be calculated numbers. So I'm not gonna get really bent on, gee, my numbers aren't exactly what I thought they would be in terms of the raw numbers. I'm looking for how much of this gain in horsepower and torque in percentage. The bottom line is, folks, we all know that we're sticking a lot of money in these coaches for water pumps and various accoutrements inside. You know, you got leather finishes and design and decor and floors and things that you don't feel under your foot when you're driving up the hill pulling a vehicle. That's what I'm looking for. If I get that, then I'm a happy customer. I'm anxious to see the dyno, but I'm really anxious to drive this. So thanks for hanging in there.
Okay, here we are. It's uh, 522, 115 degrees. Not good. Hope you can hear me, and I bet you can't. Wow. Sorry, I know it was really super loud. Um, if you can't hear anything, don't worry, I can't either. And uh, I'm not even working, I'm just dripping sweat. But we've got Lewis, um, he's up in the cab. He runs a remote data monitor from the dyno control center all the way up into the coach. So what that enables him to do is he, he controls the entire coach from the driver's seat. Uh, he can punch in load figures. Obviously, he can select the drive um, gear. And as a refresher, we accidentally kept it in fifth for the first dyno test because that was what the text thought of the time was um, the direct drive, but it's not. So right now he's running at 41 miles per hour. Um, when he changes data points, you'll actually see him log it and then change. Right now he's running at a 75% load. We're running at 1300 RPM and we're pumping out a whopping five horsepower with 18 foot pounds. So if you wanna know, that's what your rig does when it's just coasting along. So now he's gonna switch to 85% load. So he's gonna run her back up pretty soon. In fact, out there, you can see that big swamp cooler. They got pushed right in a charge air cooler. Uh, otherwise, there's not a chance that she would run in this heat. The really important figure to know when you come here is your final drive ratio. They're all different. Well, let me rephrase that. They're not all different. Different model eras and different engine transmission configurations are different. Um, we had to make sure 382 was ours. So you see him clicking here, log, log. So that tells you he's actually running a test right now. So if you remember me talking earlier in the week, we were at 1150 peak torque. Um, we were in the wrong gear, but that figure right there looked uh, substantially better than anything I saw in the first test. Hey, Lou, are you at four or five? Fourth? We're in fourth gear. 570. So he's running at 2100 RPM, 67 miles an hour. And he's logging in now. So he's running another test. I'm going to zoom back a little bit so you can see the whole screen. He's at 75% load. Um, so he's running it up again. So we're at 2,000 RPM, so that's pretty much maxed out. And now he's putting the load on. So there we go, 375, here we go. So those are numbers to look at. 1,200 pounds of torque, 560, 570, 580. 1,600 pounds of torque. Beginning of the week, we were at 1,100, and we're now at 1,600. We will go ahead and print them right here. And I'll take a snapshot of them and we'll do some calculation and give you those figures because I know that's really what you guys want to know. I appreciate you watching. I know a lot of you guys have been calling these guys out here and they appreciate that too. And uh, so I hope this helped. It's fun to watch, fun to video, fun to share. Figures are fun too. <laughs> Otherwise, other than that, I hope it feels good under your foot because that's really what I'm doing it for. It's, it's not to make money on uh, fuel bills, that's for sure. But take care of you all. Be safe. Happy uh, and safe travels.